Thank you for joining us today. In the studio, we have Swami from the Vedanta Centre Melbourne. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, would you like to explain a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah, I belong to Ramakrishna Mission. The Vedanta Centre is a part of Ramakrishna Mission, it's a branch or worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I am a monk of that organisation. Uh, so I have joined the order as a monk in the year 1991. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, involved with the various uh, school education in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 2012, I was posted to Fiji. And I came here in Australia in 2013. I was in Sydney for the first five years. Mm -hmm. And from 2017, at the end of 2017, I came to Melbourne. And here uh, uh, in Australia, the main activity is uh, taking scriptural classes. Uh, taking participation in our multicultural activities, having seminars, workshops on yoga. Uh, so it's uh, mainly on those lines our activities are uh, pinpointed here, stressed here in the West. So in India, we have a lot of humanitarian activities like the running schools, colleges, we have hospitals. Mm -hmm. So right. that's the thing. Yeah. Right. And the Vedanta Center, can you talk a bit about the yeah. center in Melbourne? So it's a, it's had a very uh, significant. Uh, beginning and the first parliament of religion was in the year 1893 in Chicago uh -huh. and the Hindu representative was Swami Vivekananda and when he uh, went to the west he was without any credentials mm -hmm. but he already became quite popular because of his intelligence his way of deliberation and it's the Americans who gave him the credential to represent Hinduism uh -huh. And it was very interesting, in overnight he became a famous figure. He was known as a cyclonic monk, when suddenly he became famous. And when he came back in 1897, he formed the organization called Ramakrishna Mission. So he's the one who is pioneer in spreading the Hinduism in the West. It means Hinduism became a world religion because of his uh, role, which he has played in reaching out with, with the Vedanta to the West. I see. And we are, we are part of that organization. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite old. It's 1897. It's actually one of the oldest organizations which you see in the West, mm -hmm. the pioneer. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main philosophy behind this Vedanta uh, philosophy, or you can say our centers, is that each and every religion is true. Each path can lead us to the ultimate goal. So as many ways, so many paths. As for our ultimate uh, belief is concerned, we may have it. Mm -hmm. But there are some aspects, some humanitarian aspects, some divine qualities, which we all agree. And all the religions has produced great men with their tradition. So they, as for the efficacy of the religion is concerned, each of them are highly effective in really molding the personality. Mm -hmm. So. We believe that very all the religions are true. Mm -hmm. And another thing, we believe that the divine spark is in each and every being. So it's not just helping. It's just uh, the way we worship the divine, the same way in all our humanitarian activities, we should have a sense of that worship. It's not just simply helping. But thinking the divine spark, recognizing the divine spark in each and every person, we reach out with a sense of worshiping. So serving man is serving God. So these are the two pillars of our organization mm -hmm. and that way uh, we throughout the world, whatever activities we do, we feel that spirituality is not a part-time affair. It's a 24 by 7. It speaks of an orientation. Once you have that orientation that you are serving the God in man, mm -hmm. then all your activities become worship. Mm -hmm. You don't have to separate your worship hours from your secular activities. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic philosophy mm -hmm. behind our organization. And when was the Vedanta Center established in Melbourne? It's uh, 2005. To, uh, the history of Vedanta Center in Australia is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's our 13th president, Swami Ranganathananda. He used to visit Australia. That time we had no center. It's the small group of people here who are interested in the Vedanta philosophy. They used to invite us. And gradually the group grew as he used to visit yearly once. And then in various parts, not only in Melbourne, it's in Sydney, Melbourne, in 
Brisbane, in Perth, in Adelaide, all the main cities of Australia, these groups developed. Uh -huh. And then they felt the need of some uh, monks to come and consolidate the activity. So accordingly, they requested our headquarters in India in Melbourne. And Swami Sridharanandi was sent in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And the main center started in Sydney. And at that time, the various other centers also came into existence. And uh, in Melbourne from 2005, we had a, our permanent building. Uh, before that, it is a group who was to invite and to come. And from 2005, we have our regular center with all the activities. But still, the monks were not uh, stationed here. Mm -hmm. It's from Sydney, they used to come. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I'm the uh, first monk to come hence to stay here to consider the activities which have started long back in 2005. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that's a big job for you? Yeah, that's a, that's a quite satisfying job, I would yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. Because it's already the group was formed. To come and consider it is something which I feel I'm privileged to yes. be a part of it. Yeah. Yes. Now, Diwali, we're nearly at Diwali. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about the Festival of Lights? It's, it's a, yeah, the Festival of Lights. Uh, it, the, as per the background, it's uh, previously we considered it as a mythological background. Mm -hmm. But now it's almost a, um, a certain fact that it's not a mythology. Rama was a historical character. Mm -hmm. He went to Sri Lanka, that way that the famous epic war, which we hear of the, the Ramayana, the Rama's war against the Ravana. And uh, after uh, defeating Ravana, when he came back to Ayodhya, mm. it was on this new moon night, mm. this dark night, on which the festival of light was celebrated for the homecoming of Rama after the exile and after defeating Ravana. So that's one of the story which is uh, really much prevalent uh, in India as the uh, historical background of Diwali. Yes, so another is in various parts, the various mythologies are of course there in the background. So there's according to some of the, our tradition, they say it's a Krishna who killed Narakasura mm -hmm. on this uh, the day. That's why it's celebrated. In the eastern part, we have Kali Puja. It's the divine, uh, the mother Kali, who is worshipped on the night of Diwali. It's very significant. Uh, as in the first look, it appears that Kali is a very violent goddess, but actually it is the mother power. You know, the story behind it is very interesting. The Kartikeya mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, general, the general of the god's army. Now, when he was fighting against the Raktavija, one of the demons, the Raktavija had a special characteristic that if you try to kill him from each and every drop of blood that falls on the ground, another Raktavija will come out. It will almost like cloning, it will come out. And in no time, Karthike found that he's overpowered. There's so many Raktavijas. And then to protect his son, it's the mother goddess who took, took that violent form, which you will find in the entire nature that's a fact. That the snakes, they we say the snakes are sometimes uh, it can be very aggressive, but they are aggressive only when they have the little ones. Mm. Otherwise, they are not aggressive. So it's the mother power. That mother becomes the power, the force, when he finds that their child is in danger, mm -hmm. and it's that mother force. And she, what she did, when she came to the battle ground, the round, and she never allowed a single drop of blood to fall. She was licking. That's why the her tongue is protruded. And then Kartikeya could just uh, get over, had the sufficient strength to get over the demon this, uh, Rakta Vijay. And that's how he won the battle. But the story doesn't end here. That the, the impulse of that violence didn't stop immediately. The mother but became very violent. She became so very strong. And now she was in a mood to just vandalize. And then Shiva, the husband, he came and fell on the ground in front of Kali. Now Kali suddenly found something is obst obstructing her way and she saw her, as her husband is lying there. And now she was pacified. She got ashamed and she pacified. So it has a very spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. The significance is the energy, the Shakti itself is very, it can be destructive unless some benevolent force is there behind it. Just as the nuclear war, the, the nuclear bomb can destroy. 
But the same nuclear power, when we use it with a benevolent purpose, it can create energy. Mm. It can create the energy which can just, it can be the substitute for the electricity in the future. That's what they're trying. Mm. So the same power, when we use it for the benevolent purpose, it can become something uh, creative. It can help us to sustain and Kali represents that. That if we have with that energy is of course required. We need power, but that power has to be regulated with goodwill, with benevolence. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes productive. That's a wonderful message. Yeah. And another thing is on the new moon night, we celebrate the Diwali. Festival of light in darkness. And it has some multicultural implications here. Mm -hmm. What's the multicultural implication? That we find that we interpret it in this way. See, that light is hidden in the darkness. The photon particles, which are the light particles, when they are scattered, mm -hmm. it's darkness. Mm -hmm. But if you can somehow manage the photon particles to be unidirectional, they, when they gather the direction, you give an orientation, and then that light shines forth. It becomes a strong laser. In the present world, no society can think of just have it. Geographically, we segregated society. Right, yeah. it, all the diaspora has to mix up. Yes. We are like the photon particles all mixed up. Yeah. Now it is we who have to decide whether we just remain as a dispersed particle, not intermingling mm. and not trying to coalesce mm. and have a synthesis. Mm. Then it is darkness. Mm. It's only when we all have a single purpose that in spite of our diverse background, we are in Australia as Australians. Yes. And Australia is our nation yes. in spite of others. And the Australia's welfare is my welfare. And there we become a laser. Yes. We all integrate. And yes. from the darkness, we get the light. And that's the Diwali on the new moon night, the dark night. We are celebrating the festival of light to indicate the fact in darkness, light is hidden. The thing which is needed is synthesis. Once we synthesize, once we synchronize from the darkness, the light in a And that's what the celebration of Diwali. It's actually a celebration of the multiculturalism. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that leads me into uh, my next question was, was, what is your opinion about multi-faith diversity and multiculturalism yeah, I here? I think that's, a, that's a one of the, Diwali is not a festival of the Hindu, it's a festival of multiculturalism. Yes, yeah. yes, wonderful. Um, now, the Vedanta Centre in Melbourne, how do they link themselves with other religious groups? We do take part a lot in multi, uh, this, uh, what do you say, the interfaith activities. Yes. Even this in Marunda, where the council where we are, mm -hmm. in that council, uh, uh, the interfaith group is quite strong. And we do take an active part there. The Melbourne interfaith, we just remember the year when I came here, 2017. In 2018, in the month of February, uh, it's uh, the interfaith uh, month it is considered. And uh, you, know, yeah, you would be very happy to know the Interfaith Centre of Melbourne organised an Interfaith Meet mm -hmm. in which I was lucky to uh, represent as the Hindu representative. And throughout the world, uh, there is, uh, is something like a, 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 just a competition to find out, just to, to remember, just to, what you say that, uh, to, accept that uh, to recognize that, uh, that, that such and such group has performed well in inter-religious activities mm -hmm. and the Melbourne Center was given the first prize mm -hmm. yeah. globally it was uh, and uh, it was a great it was a great event so that way we took participate we were participating in that and in the next year uh, that uh, recognition was again accepted by the world parliament of religion and for that we were actually invited for a webinar series so that way, in, uh, we are quite active in the, this multicultural activities, interfaith activities. Yes, yes. Uh, we find that it's, it's, a, it's a thing which is not an option anymore. It's mandatory. We have to all coalesce together mm -hmm. to really think of our, this wonderful future. Mm -hmm. As, uh, together we stand or else. Uh, that's the song uh, which I, I again and again uh, just uh, remember when I came to Australia is that we are on the same boat brother if you tip one end you're going to tip the other you're going to rock the other so if we it's a, such an interconnected society 
if we create a disruption, that disruption is going to spread globally. Yes. And recently in Bangladesh, something has happened. Mm -hmm. And that also reminds me of that. Just we find everywhere, the entire world is getting aware of it. That, yes. So it's now no more a segregated thing. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very responsible. Mm -hmm. So as a human being, we are the only responsible beings. Yes. The word responsible is very nice. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Yes. That we have the ability no other animal has. They are just guided by their impulse. Mm. We as a human being can choose, we can choose what my response will be. Yes. yes. What to do, what not to do. Yes. And that we are the most res only only not the most, only responsible being. Mm. And it's our choice which is going to decide the future. And yes. there lies our responsibility. Yes, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful message for, for Melbourne and coming out of lockdown as yeah. well. Um, and uh, just finally, uh, do you have any Diwali messages for our viewers? Yeah, that's the thing that uh, the Diwali message, as I was mentioning, yeah. that in Australia, we are celebrating multiculturalism. Just you go out in the road, such a varied, it, all the groups you've seen. Mm. It's a feast of your eyes to see that so much varied cultures. Mm. Even 50 years back, uh, when you go to any just uh, any place it's only the uh, you are supposed to be that the person who are belong to a different culture you are where the onlooker everyone belongs to the mainstream that was the thing but now it's a fest every day fest you just go out you find all these varied peoples yes but if we remain as a group separated in our own pockets mm -hmm. that is in no way going to help us it will create dissension uh, it's it's a it's a something that's mandatory that we should reach out and try to relate with others. At the same time, we should be holding on to our own culture. It's uh, nowadays they say that multiculturalism is actually like metropolitanism. It's it's a metropolitan culture. What's metropolitan culture? That I may be an Indian, but suddenly I may feel like why not have some Italian dish? I can go to the Italian restaurant, have pizza, pasta. That doesn't mean I lose my taste for my Indian food. I do have that, but there's no harm in testing the Italian food. There's no harm in testing the Mediterranean food. So being from my own culture, there's no harm in intermingling with others, finding the sublimity in others' culture, enjoy that also. I can easily go to the church and enter and enjoy the beauty of the congregation there. What's the harm in it? It does it in no way affects my religion. It, it, I'm still, uh, still a Hindu and that way we recognize others, we get the benefit of others' culture, it sometimes can help us to get rid of the monotony of my own culture. Mm -hmm. When you're in the same culture, however sublime it may be, mm -hmm. that increases the monotony if you're just doing the same thing. Yes. We are so lucky to be in a generation where we can easily break our monotony by just by absorbing ourselves in the sublimity of the other culture. Yes. And that's the thing which has given us a broad scope in the present world mm. with all the cultures coming together. There's no way you have to. Yes. And there now that orientation, which that has to just change yes. so that when we are all physically together, we have to be mentally and emotionally also mm. binding mm. to find a new world mm. where our skin color doesn't matter yeah. or ethnic uh, religion background doesn't matter. Mm. We have them. But in spite of them, we can all have a ground where we can all coalesce to rest like the honey mm -hmm. from the various flowers the bee is bringing. So we in this present culture, the Diwali speaks of that let us all become spiritual bee. Let us collect the honey from all the flowers. That's lovely. And that's the honey we can get. And we can we celebrate can all, all the flowers. That's, yes, and we can all become the spiritual bees. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Swami, for coming in today. Um, and I'm sure our viewers would um, absolutely um, enjoy what you're saying. And um, happy Diwali. Thank you. Same to you. Happy Diwali. Okay. Thank you so much.